Uh, Alright, yeah, so welcome back. And we're doing cloud computing, as you probably already know. So, uh, there, in cloud computing, there, it's basically, you can say, it consists of five main aspects. And these five main aspects, not, all of them are certainly not unique to cloud computing, um, like the general philosophy of cloud computing, but if they, if they, if they're shared by many other different server um, topo and network topologies, but one or two are absolutely unique to cloud computing, and they're generally essentially what define cloud computing. So the first one is called pooled computing or compute, depending on how you phrase it, resources. Now, what, what pool computing resources means is that if I'm a cloud service provider, which is what it's called, and you are a, so, uh, say, a customer, and you want to contract some of my services, you do not really know at any point in time how big my infrastructure is, unless you specifically ask for it, and then again, it's my choice whether or not to tell you. It's more like, you know I have this big pot of capacity and servers and resources, and you want to access some of that, and you, uh, you pay me for such, to, for such access. So, like basically the main thing about pool computer resources is that uh, it acts as one, one big pot. So, now, the thing about this is that it's certainly not unique to cloud computing. Like, you can have other types of uh, service uh, providers like managed hosting or co-location where you also have a huge pool of resources and the customer doesn't really know the details about them. Uh, and this has really come about in the last decade or so because of like the rise of huge data centers that span many square kilometers. Um, the second is actually a technology called virtualization. Now this technology is one of the most important technologies there today. Not just in cloud computing, it's used everywhere. And what virtualization essentially is, it rose about, like, the, as a technology, it came about around in the 80s or so, when server and just general computing hardware and PC hardware as well became too powerful and more powerful than what the average, say, since we're talking in terms of enterprise and servers and websites and stuff, the average website or web app, especially since this is Web, web 1.0, would use. So now, virtualization is essentially where you can run two OSs, two or more, two or more OSs operating system, uh, OSs, uh, simultaneously. And like your, uh, the most common example of an OS would be Windows. And what this allows you to do is use powerful hardware to its maximum potential, which, and at the same time, you can have more than one person. Now, person here means any customer. It can represent an entire organization or an entire company. Any customer or person can use the same set of hardware or the same set of resources for completely different tasks and in complete isolation from the others. So, what essentially the general idea of virtualization is that you always have a host OS, it's called the host because this is the main OS that runs on the base level of the hard hardware, and it's the one. And this host OS manages the sub the subsequent guest OSs, and they can be any n number. They can be any n number of guest OSs, uh, depending on the power of your hardware. And, but then at any point in time, there can only be one. Most to us running on a specific set of, of uh, hardware. And the thing about the guest OSs, so then now, these guest OSs are managed by the host. But each guest OS, so like guest OS 1, guest OS 2. So for example, if I have a server set and it, it's running a host OS of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which is managing my servers, and underneath I have several uh, what they're called VMs, or virtual machines, of say Windows, maybe Linux, even FreeBSD. These three OSs, all my three guest OSs, they do not interact with one another at all. 
and to the person who is using them, they only perceive that as if they have an entire system at their command. They do not see any of the other traffic or any of the other um, activities that are being performed by the other uh, guest devices. Unless, of course, you specifically choose to have some level of interaction between these two. Um, so yeah, this is, again, this is nowhere, this is nowhere close to unique to the cloud. It's used everywhere. In fact, it's even used on your average PC these days. Um, when, like, you see these days, right, you can run Windows on Mac simultaneously using software such as Parallels and VirtualBox. That's virtualization. Uh, second or third, this is, uh, now this is the defining factor of the cloud. This is like the reason people migrate to cloud architectures. And it's uh, what I mean, and in a, what it's called is automated elastic scaling. Now to understand this term, you have to understand like the words that make it up. So automated, this is pretty self-explanatory. It's automatic, but it doesn't require human intervention. Elastic. This means that it's, it can change dynamically and quickly and in both directions, vertical, vertical and um, horizontal. And I'll, t I'll explain what this means in a second. And scaling. Scaling is just general increase or decrease of resources. Or even things like network connectivity or backup power or just general power like electricity. So now automated elastic scaling is the defining factor of the cloud. And automated elastic scaling and virtualization have, and pool computer resources, these three have a major, these three tie up together quite, quite significantly. So, now what automated elastic scaling means is that if I have a web app running on some cloud architecture, and like for example, say Amazon, Amazon website, I'm sure you all know, the retail online website, uh, online retail website, and say they, like, you, like based on studies I've done in the past of the traffic my website gets in requests per day, say, or hits per day, I know that during the holiday seasons, like Christmas, and, or during when school holidays, or the summer, or if you're in India, maybe Diwali, the, I know at this time, these times of year, that I'll get a spike in bandwidth. I get a spike in requests per day, and the spike in the number of hits my site gets. So I need my website needs to, and my web application needs to be prepared for this. It cannot because I don't want it to fail, right? So. At the same time, I should not just provision huge amounts of hardware in preparation for this because then during the down times of the year when people are not buying so much, when people are not spending, then it's like a waste, right? It's an opportunity cost if you take economics, you'll know what I mean. So now automated elastic scaling solves or attempts to solve this problem. So what it does is so if I have a graph, like if I have a graph of what expected versus actual uh, demand my site gets, and say it follows the same thing as a business cycle, where the average, the average growth is up linear, where but the actual growth, and this is projected growth, and our x-axis is time, and y-axis is say infrastructure. So now. As you can see, projected growth is generally linear. But in actuality, what happens is it follows like what, what economists call the trade cycle, the business cycle. It has its ups and downs, its ups and downs, its ups and downs. And now, I, and then, so as we see, projected, it goes linear. But infrastructure cost, infrastructure used, that's called infrastructure used, or required. So you can see that, say, at this point, At this point, I have a significant increase in my infrastructure required amount of infrastructure than from say here, right? There's a significant increase, but then over here it suddenly come down again. So there's a significant decrease, right? So then if I were to suddenly provision up my hardware, I can't get rid of it again because hardware is a servers and rack space and data center renting out physical land, all this. Is um, provisioning power, contracting for network connectivity, backup services. These are all long term commitments, often with annual contracts. And also because actual capital, it's called server capital, the value, like any other large commodity, depreciates over time. So you can't just buy it one year and then sell the other for like the same or higher price and recover your investment. It's, it doesn't work like that. So what would happen is if I were to have a sudden increase in cost from, say, uh, Jan 
to maybe March, and then a sudden subsequent fall again in July. I lost. I, I'm lost. I've wasted a lot of money in the, this much money in the extra hardware that I bought because now it's not being used. But then suddenly again, you see from July, it suddenly jumps up a huge amount to here. Say, let's call this in uh, September. So you now have a huge increase required. Except now you know your hardware is at this level, right? So let's say maybe here. But that's still a huge increase. So you're going to have to provision more hardware. But then again, what happens after the subsequent fall again? So you almost, it's like you're increasingly wasting money at certain periods in the year in the future. Now, this is called vertical scaling. Because it's called, sorry, scale up approaches. Because you're physically scaling up your hardware. You're, you're buying new things, you're acquiring new network connections, you're acquiring new rack spaces, you're renting new data centers, these kind of things, because you're scaling up your resources. Then there's another type, and you're doing it in big chunks, huge investments, like every three months or four months. And uh, the other type is called scale out, and the previous scale out was a uh, type of vertical scale, because you're always increasing your resources in big chunks. The other is called scale out, which is a horizontal scale, where I will say, okay, Instead of scaling up in huge chunks like I did from Jan to, to March, I'll slowly increase in bits and pieces at, between the period of Jan and March. And, when, uh, and then I'll scale out, which is horizontally, onto these as and when I need to. So horizontal scaling, which is scaling out, is more predictive. Whereas scaling out is more, oh crap, we have so many, we have so many uh, requests per second coming this month. We need to scale up our hardware. So that's basically the primary difference between vertical and horizontal scaling. Now, so this is your scale out and scale, uh, sorry, scale up and scale out approaches. Now, if I were to draw the automated elasticity diagram, this is what it would look like. 